So you a comedian, <laughs> you a radio host, uh oh, yes. and now you got a game show? I'm finna go on shit it sharp show. In a recent Twitter and Instagram post on January 7th, Steve Harvey indirectly addressed Cat Williams' recent criticisms while on the set of Family Feud. In the clip, Harvey shared some advice with the audience, stating that one doesn't need to explain themselves to haters. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. With confidence, Harvey asserted, No, you ain't got to tell nobody nothing. All you got to do is be it. You don't have to open your mouth. He backed up his statement by quoting Psalms 23. 5. Emphasizing that God prepares a table in the presence of enemies, and he does it all the time. Harvey pointed out that haters can simply turn on their TVs any day of the week to catch a glimpse of him. When you go act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. You thought he was black and ugly. The former talk show host continued by sharing his perspective on acquiring haters, suggesting that it happens because individuals are effective at what they do, stirring jealousy in others. Harvey even delved into his belief that haters might be sent by the devil to oppose God's guidance toward greatness. God is about to do something, and the devil is throwing in opposition, Harvey stated. He then addressed someone who is really attacking me right now, though he chose not to drop a name. With patience, he expressed his anticipation of what God will do, firmly stating that nobody can stop what God has in store. The clip ended with Harvey captioning it, you don't have to address your haters. The underlying message was clear. Actions speak louder than words. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit. And Cat Williams made some bold claims, suggesting that Steve Harvey gave up stand-up comedy after a stand-up routine where Williams humorously labeled Harvey's iconic flat top as a man unit. The comedian alleged that this playful jab led to Harvey stepping away from stand-up. said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made... All lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. Williams didn't stop there. He also asserted that Harvey took inspiration for his hit sitcom, The Steve Harvey Show, from Mark Curry's Hangin' with Mr. Cooper. According to Williams, Harvey wasn't supportive of Bernie Mac's Hollywood transition because, as per Williams, Harvey aspired to be an actor but lacked the necessary skills. The comedian expressed his views bluntly, stating, There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Potato Head. They're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But In a recent development, Shirley Strawberry, co-host of the well-known radio show, The Steve Harvey Morning Show, reportedly shared some intriguing details with her soon-to-be estranged husband, Ernest Ernesto Williams, during an October 2022 jail call. The conversation shed light on the opulent lifestyle of Steve Harvey and his wife Marjorie Harvey, juxtaposed with the perceived financial challenges faced by those working with them. Ernest Williams is currently serving prison time in Atlanta's Fulton County Jail on charges ranging from child pornography and theft to gun possession and fraud related to a credit repair business, as reported by Atlanta Black Star. The leaked jail recording, which recently became public, triggered a significant backlash for Shirley Strawberry. In the conversation, she expressed a sentiment of being viewed as the help by Marjorie Harvey, acknowledging it as a reality. Addressing the controversy, Shirley Strawberry issued a mea culpa to both Steve Harvey and his wife. Meanwhile, Steve, acknowledging the unique nature of the situation, regretfully stated that the information came from their inside circle, emphasizing the familial bond they share. This leaked phone conversation coincides with rampant speculations about the Harvey couple potentially parting ways due to alleged infidelity. 
During the private jail call in October 2022, Shirley Strawberry vividly described her visit to Steve Harvey's residence. Initially, she marveled at the luxurious lifestyle of both Steve and Marjorie, particularly highlighting Marjorie's personal spa and workout room. Shirley shared a humorous moment, commenting on Marjorie's ability to enjoy daily massages and have personal trainers visit her home. However, she hinted at an alleged discomfort when Mrs. Harvey was present, suggesting that Steve might be apprehensive about his wife. Following the leak of this conversation on social media, speculations about the state of Steve and Marjorie Harvey's marriage and home life have surged. It is important to note that these speculations have arisen in the context of ongoing rumors about the couple's potential separation. In light of the controversy, Shirley Strawberry offered a public apology to Steve and Marjorie Harvey. The situation adds a layer of complexity to their long-standing professional relationship, given that Strawberry and Harvey have been co-workers since 2005, with Steve even walking Shirley down the aisle when she married Ernest Williams in 2015. Currently, the couple is in the process of a divorce. Moreover, Shirley Strawberry shared an interesting detail during the leaked phone call, mentioning how she had the chance to explore Steve Harvey's house and take a peek at things when Marjorie wasn't around. Playfully, she suggested that Steve might be a bit afraid of his wife, portraying a dynamic where Marjorie viewed Steve's co-workers and employees as nothing more than hired help. After the tapes were released, Shirley Strawberry took a brave step forward, publicly apologizing to both Steve and Marjorie Harvey. She admitted to being aware of the recorded call, but never anticipated its public disclosure, especially considering it was a private, casual conversation with her husband. During a recent episode of the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley directly addressed Steve, expressing regret. Right here and now, I want to apologize to you and Marjorie for what I said. As much as I wish I could, I can't take it back. I can't. I said it, and I want to apologize. It was definitely not me trying to add to what you and Marjorie already have going on in your lives right now. She candidly added that she was devastated by the situation and had been anxious about facing Steve, or potentially losing her job. Interestingly, Shirley Strawberry and Steve Harvey have been colleagues since 2005 on the morning radio show. Notably, Steve even walked Shirley down the aisle when she married Ernest Williams in 2015. Currently, the couple is going through a divorce. Responding to Shirley Strawberry's on-air apology, Steve Harvey expressed how the leaked jail call had deeply hurt him and Marjorie. He clarified that this was not mere gossip, but a statement from someone within his inner circle, making it particularly impactful. Steve stressed that regardless of who made the statement, the damage was done and was on its way to affecting their reputation. He acknowledged Shirley's good intentions, but highlighted the unfortunate timing of the revelation amidst other challenges. In a firm and assertive tone, Steve Harvey addressed those attempting to tarnish his marriage, expressing fatigue at being publicly criticized. He particularly disliked how Marjorie's name was dragged into the situation. Steve emphasized his commitment to protect his wife from negative attention, stating unequivocally that the woman he married was a good, God-fearing, loyal, and loving person. The leaked jail call coincides with rumors about Marjorie Harvey allegedly cheating on her husband of 16 years and the couple heading for a separation. It appears that Steve Harvey is no stranger to dealing with false news and negative PR. Just recently, the comedian and television personality found himself in the midst of a cheating rumor. Interestingly, he wasn't the one implicated in the alleged infidelity. Instead, it was his wife, Marjorie Bridges, who faced accusations of cheating. Now, Steve Harvey has released a statement addressing all the accusations surrounding their marriage. In an unexpected twist, Harvey also took action by firing their social media manager for mishandling the sensitive matter. In the midst of rumors surrounding popular TV personality Steve Harvey's wife, Marjorie Bridges, allegedly cheating on him, it's important to clarify that these claims have been debunked as baseless. The false reports emerged alongside another incident involving Harvey's social media manager, who posted a negative tweet about comedians. The unfounded cheating allegations circulated online, suggesting that Bridges was seeking a divorce due to an alleged extramarital affair with their chef and bodyguard. However, Nigerian businessman Ned Nwoko, a friend of Harvey's, stepped in to set the record straight. 
Nwoko labeled the rumors as fake news and emphasized that he reached out to Harvey, who confirmed that he and his wife were doing well and the allegations were entirely untrue. Amid the social media storm, the 66-year-old Harvey addressed the incident involving his social media manager in a video. He explained that he had taken the step of firing the employee responsible for the negative tweet about comedians. Expressing confusion over the tweet, Harvey stressed that his brand is built on positivity and motivation. Taking responsibility as the employer, he vowed to maintain his focus on encouraging others. Harvey's video message conveyed his commitment to supporting young comedians and the broader message of positivity that defines his brand. He emphasized the importance of understanding where people are in their careers and fostering a supportive environment. Steve Harvey isn't exactly what he may appear to be, especially considering he's faced exposure multiple times. Following the relocation of his talk show to Los Angeles, reports surfaced about a surprising memo he sent to his new staff. In this memo, Harvey made some unusual demands typically seen on tour riders. In the May 2017 memo, obtained by Chicago blogger Robert Fetter, Harvey stated, There will be no meetings in my dressing room, no stopping by or popping in, no one. Do not come to my dressing room unless invited. Do not open my dressing room door. If you open my door, expect to be removed. He continued by expressing that his security team would prevent anyone with the intent to see or speak to him from standing at his door, urging everyone, including TV staff, to schedule an appointment. Harvey justified his actions by claiming he was seeking more free time for me throughout the day. He explained that the memo aimed to address the lenient open-door policy he had allowed during his show's previous run in Chicago. A few days later, when discussing the leaked letter with Entertainment Tonight, he reiterated this defense. Harvey recounted instances where people would walk into his makeup room, interrupt his lunch, or ambush him in the hallway without knocking. Reflecting on the situation, he acknowledged that he probably should have handled it differently. Steve Harvey also found himself entangled in a peculiar lawsuit concerning a private jet back in November 2015. Allegedly, Harvey was sued for backing out of a plan to lease a private jet midway through more than $400,000 worth of renovations he had requested for the aircraft. The requested upgrades included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls, as reported by TMZ. Although Harvey settled the initial lawsuit, about a year later, he took legal action against the Federal Aviation Title Company, FATC, to recoup the $250,000 he had put in escrow for leasing the private jet. Harvey was awarded the money by default after the FATC failed to respond to his lawsuit, according to TMZ. One might speculate that Steve Harvey might have opted for commercial flights since then. Despite being a relationship advice guru, Steve Harvey has faced his fair share of romantic challenges, especially in his relationship with his second ex-wife, Mary Lee Harvey. In 2011, Steve had to obtain a court injunction against Mary Lee after she posted videos on YouTube, making various allegations, including that Steve had turned their son against her and left her homeless. Despite the injunction, Mary Lee continued to threaten Steve's reputation. In 2013, she was sentenced to 30 days in jail for leaking sealed documents to the media about an incident where Steve was accused of beating their son. TMZ reported that Harvey was cleared of the allegations. Adding to the drama, in May 2017, Mary Lee sued Steve for $60 million, citing charges like child endangerment, torture, conspiracy against rights, kidnapping, murder, breach of contract, and intentional infliction of emotional distress, all related to their tumultuous 2005 divorce. In response to the lawsuit, Steve's lawyer vehemently rejected the claims, describing the complaint as meritless, frivolous, and the allegations completely false. Harvey also considers the The Cosby Show alum his mentor and acknowledges the influence Cosby has had on his career. However, Cosby faced significant legal troubles, being charged and convicted on multiple counts of sexual assault in 2018. More than 50 women came forward from 2014 onwards, accusing Cosby of drugging, rape, and various sexual misconduct throughout his career. 
Despite serving two years of his 10-year sentence, Cosby's conviction was overturned by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in 2021, as reported by ABC News. In 2017, amid Cosby's legal challenges, Harvey openly expressed his unwavering support for his friend. He shared with The Hollywood Reporter, I haven't talked to him in a few months, but when I'm your friend, I'm your friend. Harvey recalled reaching out to Cosby when the troubles surfaced, and Cosby's response was remarkable. Hey man, I appreciate you calling, but just stay away from me right now. You don't need none of this on you. This gesture left a lasting impression on Harvey. Felicia Rashad and Kesia Knight Pulliam, fellow stars from The Cosby Show, also stood by Cosby during these challenging times. Despite Cosby's release from prison in 2021, more women have continued to come forward, filing lawsuits against him for similar crimes as recently as June 2023. Turning to Steve Harvey's personal life, he has had his fair share of relationship challenges. His first marriage to Marsha Harvey in 1980 faced tension as his comedy career took off. The couple separated in 1990, before officially divorcing in 1994, dealing with unpaid child support and reports that Harvey began living with his future wife, Mary Shackelford, before the divorce was finalized. Harvey and Mary got married in 1996, welcomed a son, and divorced in 2005. Following the split, Shackelford alleged that Harvey cheated on her with his current wife, Marjorie. Since 2007, Harvey has been married to Marjorie Harvey. But in August 2023, rumors surfaced of Marjorie allegedly cheating on him with the family's security guard and chef. Harvey addressed these rumors at a comedy show, reassuring the audience that his marriage was doing just fine. Presently, Harvey is the father of seven children, including four biological and three adopted from Marjorie's previous marriage. His relationship advice has often raised eyebrows over the years, sparking discussions and even dedicated YouTube videos. Whether he's making controversial remarks about men, women, or dating, Harvey has faced criticism for everything from perceived homophobia to reinforcing gender stereotypes and anti-intellectual views. One instance that left many scratching their heads was Harvey's response to a viewer question on Good Morning America about why men are drawn to unintelligent and shallow women. His puzzling reply suggested that if a guy is pursuing a casual encounter, it's better to target individuals who are shallow and unintelligent, avoiding intelligent women who might reject such advances. The comment has left many bewildered and questioning the advice. In another controversial episode, Steve Harvey faced backlash in January 2017 for meeting with President-elect Donald Trump. The meeting, especially during a time when Trump was accused of racism, stirred criticism within the African-American community. Harvey's positive descriptions of Trump as a great guy, genuine and congenial and sincere, surprised many, considering his previous support for Trump's rival, Hillary Clinton. Despite supporting Clinton, Harvey defended his meeting with Trump on his radio show, emphasizing the importance of sitting at the table to influence change. He stated, change can only happen when we sit at the table. If we sit at the table, then we can have a say as to what's to be eaten on the menu. However, months later, Harvey candidly admitted on his radio show that meeting with Trump was the worst mistake of his life, acknowledging the controversy it stirred. Steve Harvey's marriage with Marjorie Harvey is also something. In a revealing interview with Essence, Marjorie shared insights into their love story that began in the late 1980s. Distance initially led them to drift apart, but fate had a different plan, one that involved some significant drama. Enter Marjorie's marriage to a legitimate drug kingpin and Steve's roller coaster divorce from his second wife, adding unexpected layers to the funny man's narrative. Who would have thought that behind the laughter lies such a wild and intricate story? Like any high-profile marriage, Mr. and Mrs. Harvey have not been immune to public scrutiny. Bizarre tabloid rumors constantly predicting their divorce and Steve's infamous Miss Universe mishap have contributed to the colorful tapestry of their relationship. Steve Harvey and Marjorie first crossed paths in 1987 at a Memphis comedy club, where Steve was showcasing his comedic prowess. In a twist of fate, Marjorie, arriving late, found herself in the front row during Steve's set. Little did she know, 
This chance encounter would set the stage for a love story filled with unexpected turns. Steve, captivated by Marjorie's presence, halted his performance to make a bold proclamation from the stage. Lady, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to marry you one day. While Marjorie didn't immediately succumb to his charm, a few weeks into dating, she realized that Steve was the one. However, life took its toll, and circumstances led to their separation. In an episode of Family Feud, Steve revealed the challenges he faced during that time. I was becoming homeless, and so we only dated for a year, and I didn't have the money, so I never drove back to see her, he shared. Their paths diverged until 89 when, unfortunately, both had entered into separate marriages. Their love story took a remarkable turn after Steve's divorce in 2005. Upon discovering Marjorie's own divorce, Steve wasted no time. In a grand gesture, he took a private plane to Memphis the very next day. The rest, as they say, is history, and the couple has been inseparable ever since. Adding another layer to their narrative, Marjorie's first husband wasn't a typical talk show host. Instead, he held notoriety of a different kind, with the FBI. Marjorie married Jim Townsend, a former drug kingpin whose life story was entangled with the law. In the early 90s, Marjorie found herself under scrutiny by the FBI and DEA while married to Townsend. Allegations surfaced that Townsend, in an ill-fated attempt, tried to purchase a staggering 40 kilos of cocaine. Sentenced to life in prison, Townsend served 26 years before being pardoned by then-President Barack Obama in January 2017. Townsend, speaking to Radar, claimed that the FBI and DEA had evidence against Marjorie, implicating her in his drug ring. He asserted that authorities threatened her with arrest if he didn't cooperate. Despite the tumultuous circumstances, Marjorie was never charged, and she reportedly parted ways with Townsend less than five years into his sentence. Since his release, Townsend has hinted at exposing their relationship through a memoir he began crafting during his time in prison. And it seems like she's not the only one in the relationship with a history of getting exposed. In fact, what Cat Williams said shouldn't even surprise anyone considering what Mark Curry said three years ago. Back in 2020, as Steve Harvey's Facebook watch show, Steve on Watch, made its debut, Comedian and former Hangin' with Mr. Cooper star Mark Curry took a public swing at the Family Feud host. Mark Curry, in an explosive video reported by TMZ, claimed that Steve Harvey, known for hosting NBC's Little Big Shots, had allegedly pilfered his comedic material not once, but twice. In a candid moment outside LAX airport in Los Angeles, Mark expressed his grievance, stating, he used my material on both of his platforms. According to Mark, he confronted Steve about it earlier at Def Comedy Jam in 2017. I saw him, Steve, and I went up to talk to him and I said, Baby, you're using my material, taking money out of my pocket. You've made enough money, you're very wealthy. You don't have to take it away from me. But then he used it on his other show. The kids show little big shots, Mark explained, visibly frustrated. In a direct appeal to Steve through the camera, Mark declared, Steve Harvey, stop using my material. Just call me and I'll tell you how to use my material. If you're going to steal someone's material, at least do it right. He concluded by mentioning his plans for an upcoming comedy special. Following Mark's accusations, Steve Harvey addressed the situation in a subsequent TMZ interview. Denying any wrongdoing, Steve expressed his frustration, stating, I'm getting sick of this right here. Mark Curry needs to grow up. He challenged Mark's claims by highlighting his absence from the stand-up stage since 2015 and questioned which joke Mark was referring to. When informed that Mark specifically mentioned material on Little Big Shots, Steve incredulously responded, Are you kidding me? He urged Mark to get a life, get a career, vehemently asserting, I've never stolen a joke in 35 years. Steve Harvey was not the only person to catch smoke from Cat Williams, though. On the Club Shay Shay podcast, Cat Williams unleashed a candid and no-holds-barred tirade, taking aim at several prominent Hollywood figures whom he labeled as deviants. During his conversation with former NFL tight end Shannon Sharp, Williams delved into his own experiences of being canceled 
In the past, for speaking out against controversial figures like Michael Jackson and R. Kelly amid their legal troubles. In a bold prediction, Williams foretold that the year 2024 would likely be a reckoning for all the perceived deviants in the industry. Race is not where the line is drawn, the comic said. It's God's side and the other side, and we don't care nothing about the other side, period. All of these big de deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. Similarly to Michael Jackson and R. Kelly, Williams insisted that he has been collecting information on people and their secrets. Drawing parallels with his outspoken stance against Michael Jackson and R. Kelly, Williams claimed to have been accumulating information and uncovering people's secrets over the past three decades. In 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets, he declared. Williams expressed a willingness to pay for information, encouraging individuals with knowledge about others' indiscretions to come forward. He defended his role by stating, you don't make me the villain, not the guy that raises black children, never touched hard drugs, and has no stories of wrongdoing. They'll just go out and lie, saying, The industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. In a recent outspoken session, Cat Williams didn't hold back, calling out several celebrities with actor Kevin Hart and rapper Chris Ludacris Bridges under the spotlight. Williams went so far as to dub Hart a studio plant, emphasizing how unusual it was for a comedian to land major deals and lead a sitcom and movie within their first year in L.A. Williams also delved into Ludacris's narrative, suggesting both of them were approached by the Illuminati. He claimed the offers involved radical changes, like one person having to cut all their hair and the other being presented with a staggering $200 million deal for 20 movies, Williams revealed that he was one of the individuals in this scenario. When questioned about potential backlash, Williams responded with a bold statement, asserting, Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why you know what the known one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is, is to act like it didn't happen. He didn't shy away from calling out Cedric the Entertainer, alleging that Cedric stole one of his top jokes for the Kings of Comedy Tour in the 90s. According to Williams, Cedric, who had complimented the joke backstage, later performed it verbatim, making only a minor tweak by changing a car into a spaceship. Williams also didn't spare Kevin Hart, labeling him an industry plant and questioning the rapid success Hart achieved upon arriving in Hollywood. Williams raised doubts about the absence of records for sold-out shows or standing ovations in comedy clubs during Hart's early career. Addressing a past radio feud with Wanda Smith, Williams criticized her use of derogatory language and highlighted a disturbing incident involving Lamora Sellers, Smith's spouse, allegedly threatening him with a gun. Williams expressed his dismay at the world's indifference to the incident, in response to claims by Ricky Smiley that he was initially intended for Williams' role in Friday After Next, Williams vehemently denied it, citing a rigorous audition process with over 200 black comedians. Williams also dropped a bombshell about Harvey Weinstein, stating that the disgraced film mogul once offered him oral sex, a claim he made before Weinstein's sexual misconduct allegations came to light. Adding more intrigue, Williams suggested a connection between Chris Tucker and Jeffrey Epstein, referring to the current version of Tucker as Epstein Island Chris Tucker. Kevin Hart swiftly fired back at Cat Williams' comments, adding a touch of humor to his response on live TV. Addressing the Plastic Cup Boys, Hart playfully quipped about Cat Williams supposedly buying and then returning the New York Knicks, complete with a receipt in a lighthearted jab at his counterpart's remarks. Interestingly, it appears that Hart had subtly reacted to Williams' comments a day after the interview went viral. During the promotion of his upcoming movie Lift on X, Hart remarked, Gotta get that anger up out ya champ. It's honestly sad. Ice Cube also joined the fray, addressing claims made by Williams regarding casting decisions and an alleged rape scene in the Friday movie. Cube clarified on X, formerly Twitter, 
that he would never shoot such a scene, especially in a film like Friday, where such events are not depicted on camera. Cube affirmed that Smiley was considered for the Money Mike role, but Williams ultimately fit the part better. Ricky Smiley, responding on his radio show, emphasized that there was no reason for him to lie about the casting. He expressed gratitude for the decision made, acknowledging that he couldn't have executed the role like Williams did. Smiley also tackled the notion of a contractual obligation to wear a dress in projects with Williams, stating that contractual terms don't diminish his manhood or his decision to play a woman for the sake of providing for his family. Cedric the Entertainer, in an Instagram comment, dismissed what he called revisionist history, asserting that his entire career couldn't be reduced to one joke claimed by Cat Williams. Ludacris took a creative approach, responding with a freestyle diss aimed at Williams, asserting that he's never been a part of the Illuminati, only the Illuminati. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.